Our story begins with several students hanging outside the front of their high school. They are all laughing and talking about the upcoming dance when they see Peter Parker walk by with his big glasses and carrying books. Say gang, we need one more guy for the dance. How about Peter Parker over there? Are you kidding? That bookworm wouldn't know a cha-cha from a waltz. Peter Parker? He's Midtown High's only professional wallflower. The next day, Peter is laying in bed and his Uncle Ben comes in to wake him up for school. As you may have gathered, Peter Parker was far from being the biggest man on campus. But his Uncle Ben thought he was a pretty special lad. You're not fooling me, Petey. I know you're awake. It's time for school. Uncle Ben leans down and begins tickling Peter and shaking his head to wake him up. Gosh, Uncle Ben, you're worse than a room full of alarm clocks. Peter gets dressed and meets his Uncle Ben downstairs along with his Aunt May. Aunt May thought the sun rose and set upon her nephew. I cooked your favorite breakfast today, Petey. Wheat cakes. Don't fatten him up too much, dear. I can hardly out-wrestle him now. Peter makes his way to school and goes to his science class. The faculty at Midtown High were also fond of this clean-cut, hard-working honor student. Keep up the good work, Parker, and you're sure to get a scholarship when you graduate. I'll do my best, sir. Although the faculty view highly of Peter, the students tend to feel differently. Peter runs into his peer Sally outside of Midtown High and tries to make friends, but she does not feel the same way. Sally, I... I wonder if you're busy tonight. Sally doesn't even look up. In fact, she continues filing her nail and then says, Peter, for the umpteenth time, you're just not my type. Not when dreamboats like Flash Thompson are around. Just as she says that, an attractive, fit man with blonde hair shows up wearing a red sports sweater. It's Flash Thompson. I admire your good taste, doll. Get lost, bookworm. Flash then takes Sally by the arm and begins walking over to a group of friends nearby. Peter then decides to join them. Look, there's a great new exhibit at Science Hall tonight. Would any of you like to go with me? Science Hall? Ha! You stick to science, son. We'll take the chicks. They all hop in Flash's nice sports car, and just as they were driving off, Flash turns and says, See you around, bookworm! Give our regards to the Atom Smashers, Peter. As Peter makes his way to the science exhibit, he begins thinking to himself, Someday I'll show them. Someday they'll be sorry. Sorry that they laughed at me. He then finds a sign that says, Science Exhibit. Experiments and Radioactivity. Open to the public, Room 30. After making his way into the room, Peter forgets the taunts of his classmates as he is transported into another world. The fascinating world of atomic science. And now for a demonstration of how we can control radioactive rays here in the laboratory. The demonstration begins, however. Nobody notices a tiny spider descend from the ceiling on an almost invisible strand of web. A spider whom fate has given a starring, in brief, role to play in the drama we call life. Accidentally absorbing a fantastic amount of radioactivity, the dying insect, in sudden shock, bites the nearest living thing, Peter Parker. Ow! A spider! It bit me! But why is it burning so? And why is it glowing in that way? My head! It feels so strange. I need some air. The other spectators begin to see Peter leave and mock him, saying he must have a weak stomach towards the experiment. As he steps outside, he begins to feel very different, as though his entire body is charged with some sort of fantastic energy. Wrapped in his thoughts, Peter doesn't hear the car, which narrowly misses him until the last instant. He leaps up into the air and grabs the hold of the building closest to him. He then realizes he can walk up the wall just by grabbing onto it and pulling himself up. A nearby kid sees him and tries to get his mom's attention by saying, Look, that man's climbing the building. His mom pays no attention and keeps walking. Peter reaches the top of the building in mere seconds, and as he grabs a hold of a steel pipe to pull himself on the roof, he crushes it with his grip. He begins thinking to himself, It's the spider. It has to be. Somehow, in some miraculous way, his bite has transferred his own power to me. I've got to have time to think. 
I've got to plan what to do with this unbelievable ability. A few minutes later, Peter finds himself outside of a public wrestling match. Inside, two very large and muscular men are wrestling. He sees a sign that reads, $100 to the man who can stay in the ring three minutes with Crusher Hogan. He thinks to himself that this would be a good way to test his new powers. Filled with excitement, Pete races back home and begins to try and figure out a disguise. He doesn't want to be a laughingstock if he fails. So he throws on some random clothes and a mask made from stockings and rushes back to the ring. I'll try for that hundred dollars, Crusher. Well, well, if it ain't a little mass marvel. Step up, sucker. Peter steps in the ring and takes his corner. Crusher begins to make his way towards him as the match begins. Now just relax, Shorty. I'll try to make this as painless as possible. As Crusher leans in to grab him, Peter quickly lunges over Crusher and turns around and picks him up. He then begins to climb a nearby pole with him on his back and takes him way up in the air. Out of fear, Crusher gives up, forfeiting the match to Peter. Put me down! You, you win! You win! After putting him down, Crusher begins to question if he's even human at all. You, you're not human! Nobody can do that! Wanna bet? People in the audience are so amazed by how he climbed the pole with Crusher on his back. They begin talking about how it was the greatest act they have ever seen. They compliment it even down to his mask. After watching, Peter is then confronted by a man in a business suit. Listen, friend, I'm a TV producer. With that act of yours, I can make you a fortune. And keep the mask angle. It's great showmanship. Here's my card. Call me. You'll be a smash on the Ed Sullivan Show. Thanks. Peter makes his way home after the show and starts talking to himself again. Showmanship? He hasn't seen anything yet. Since I have the powers of a spider, I'll design myself a spider costume... Oh, and- hi, Aunt May! Just then, Aunt May and Uncle Ben walk in the door as Peter is hiding the Spider-Man outfit he was working on. You look a little tired, Petey, so we brought you some crackers and milk. They set the food down for Peter and then leave his room. Crackers and milk. Bless them. If only they knew. Well, let's see. A spider needs a web. This little device should do just the trick. I'll fasten one to each arm. It'll operate by the slightest pressure of any finger. Peter makes two devices that attach to his wrists and shoot spider webs. He also finishes his suit and puts it on. After trying it on, he names himself Spider-Man and compliments his own suit. So they laughed at me for being a bookworm, huh? Well, only a science major could have created a device like this. With some strong liquid cement at the end, I could pull myself up anywhere. My costume is thin enough to wear unseen under my street clothes. Okay, world, better hang on to your hat. Here comes Spider-Man! Now anybody with the intelligence of a seven-year-old knows that if a man appeared on TV who seemed to be more spider than human, he'd be an overnight sensation. Especially when his feats were performed without the help of trick photography. Well, you could just imagine how the public reacted to the amazing Spider-Man. Peter showed up to that TV producer set in full Spider-Man outfit and jumped on the wall in front of the camera. I can't believe what I'm seeing with my own eyes! Spider-Man hopped down from the wall and began spinning web at objects in the room. Okay, Spider-Man, cut. That's enough. Don't show him too much. Leave him begging for more. Once the program ends, people begin to surround him, offering him a spread in Life magazine, a movie opportunity, and more. Some even just want interviews, but Peter blows them off and simply says, See my agent, boys. I'm busy. As Peter exits the set, he walks out back and sees a man running from the police. Stop! Thief! Stop him! If he gets to the elevator, he'll get away! Instead of stopping him, Peter let the man pass, and he made it to the elevator and got away. What's with you, mister? All you had to do was trip him up or hold him up for a minute. Sorry, pal, that's your job. I'm through being pushed around. By anyone. From now on, I just look out for number one, and that means me. Why, I ought to run you in. Save your breath, buddy. I've got things to do. Peter then leaves and makes his way home. As he gets in, he finds his Aunt May and Uncle Ben were waiting for him with a surprise. Peter, you know that microscope you've always wanted? Well, me and your uncle went and bought it for you this afternoon. Gosh, that's terrific. You're the greatest family any fellow ever had. Peter then thinks to himself. They're the only ones who've ever been kind to me. I'll see it to it that they're always happy. But the rest of the world can go hang for all I care. For many days, Peter went to that TV show dressed as Spider-Man. 
he had become a huge sensation across the world. Many different newspapers began running all types of articles about him as well. Then, one evening as he returned home, he found a police car in front of his house. As he approached the police, they had some terrible news for him. Bad news, son. Your uncle's been murdered. Uncle Ben? Dead? No, it can't be! Peter became very angry and grabbed the police officer by the shirt. Who did it? Who shot him? It was a burglar. Your uncle surprised him, but don't worry, lad. We've got him trapped. He's in an old Acme warehouse at the waterfront. We'll get him. Your aunt is next door with the neighbors. They're taking care of her. Peter begins to run as fast as he can, shouting that he's going to be the one to get him. The police officer tries stopping him, but it's too late. Peter had already made up his mind. He ran upstairs and put on his Spider-Man costume. I know the old Acme warehouse. It's been deserted for years. A killer could hold off an army in that gloomy old place. But he won't hold off Spider-Man. Spider-Man jumps out the window and begins swinging on his webs towards the building. When he arrives, he sees police standing at the entrance, hesitating to go in. He's in there somewhere, but he'll just pick us off like flies if we charge him. Spider-Man breaks into the building and makes his way to Uncle Ben's murder. While he's looking out the window talking about how he just needs to wait until night to sneak away, Spider-Man shows up and shouts, You'll never get away again, murderer! The killer turned around and is startled to see a man in a red and blue jumpsuit climbing across the wall. He immediately takes off, running away from Spider-Man. Surprised to see me? Peter chases after him and flips over him to get in front of him. The killer stops and raises his gun at him. There's no place on earth you can hide from me! Spider-Man then shoots his web at the killer's gun and covers his whole hand in the web. Then he runs over there and punches him so hard that he flies back and is knocked unconscious. When he goes over to see who the killer is, he is shocked. He recognizes the killer is actually the man that he did not stop several days ago at the TV station. It's the fugitive who ran past me. The one I didn't stop when I had the chance. Moments later, Spider-Man tosses the killer out the window attached to one of his webs. As the police officers are about to storm the building, they saw the body come flying out the window. They are taken back when they see that he is hanging there by a web. After Spider-Man gets a little ways away from the building, he removes his mask and begins to cry. My fault. All my fault. If only I had stopped him when I had the chance. But I didn't. And now Uncle Ben is dead. And there it is. A lean, silent figure slowly fades into the gathering darkness, aware at last that in this world, with great power, there must also come great responsibility. And so a legend is born, and a new name is added to the roster of those who make the world of fantasy the most exciting realm of all.